Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and it is Friday which means it is time for me to share another card for the There's a Stamp for That Challenge. I hope you'll stick around, see what the new challenge is and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe even tap on that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Today I will be making a card for my friend Danny's Facebook challenge group. She runs the There's a Stamp for That Challenge group on Facebook, and every two weeks she puts out a challenge with two different options. For the latest challenge, you can use a flower theme or a shaker theme. Well, you know I love a shaker card, so I decided to go with that today. If you would like to check out that Facebook challenge group, I will link it in the description box below. Before I get started on my card and on the process, I'm going to tell you a little bit about most of the products that I'll be using. If I add anything later, I will be sure to let you know in the voiceover, but if I leave you with any questions, as always, leave those in the comment section below and I'll answer you just as soon as I can. My card today will be pretty clean and simple and quick and easy. I will be using one piece of paper from this Happy Hooray paper pad and I chose this Rainbow Stripes. For my shaker bits, I decided to try these diamond dots. I got these at Joann's last weekend on sale, or I don't know if it's sale or clearance. They were only $1.25 a jar, and there are tons of little diamond dots in here. So I was going to try those, and we'll see how they work out, and I might have to head back to Joann to get some more of these. I got out four colors that I thought went well with my pattern paper. I will be cutting my shaker window with this high die. And I will be adding some extra texture with this Cuddlebug Dots embossing folder. Now Cuddlebug is no longer a company, but I have found something similar and linked it in the description box below. This is probably my favorite embossing folder ever. For the rest of my card, I got out a piece of heavyweight white cardstock for the front of the card. And I got out a white top fold card base just from my stash. For my shaker window, I will be using Duralar 3 mil acetate, or it says I guess acetate alternative, and I got this at Michael's, but you can find it online, and it's just really thin clear material, kind of like packaging when you buy stuff. Sometimes I will use my clear cardstock for shaker windows, but instead of using the heavier, nicer weight stuff, I'm going to use this while I have it. Let's get crafty! To get started, I did all of the cutting. I cut my piece of striped paper to five and a half inches tall by four and a quarter inches wide. This way it will fill the entire card front. Then I brought in the piece of heavyweight white cardstock and I cut this to five and a quarter inches tall by four inches wide. I took a sheet of Duralar from the pad and I cut a square that was just slightly smaller than four inches. I think it ended up being three and seven eighths. Then I got out a scrap of lightweight white cardstock and cut it to the same size as the Duralar. Both of these will be working together for my shaker window. Next, I got out my cuddle bug so I could do the embossing and the die cutting. I'm going to start by placing my high die cut at the top center of my piece of white cardstock, and I'm just holding that in place with a little piece of scotch blue removable tape. It was just a piece I had left over from a previous card. Once I had that die cut, I put that piece into my embossing folder. And I did make sure to go ahead and put the little piece that went between the H and the I in there just about where it would be so that my embossing would be consistent. Because most of that striped paper would be covered up by the high die cut piece, I decided to go ahead and cut a frame from that. I pulled out my Hero Arts Infinity dies and I ended up choosing the fifth from the largest. This way I'll have that little piece of striped paper to use for something else later. 
I put that in place with that same piece of blue removable tape and then I ran it through my die cutter. Now it's time to start creating that shaker. I started by putting adhesive around the outside of my high die cut piece and I just tried to make it so when I put my acetate on there it has a nice place to stick. Once that was ready I grabbed back in that little piece that goes between the H and the I and I placed my die cut back in there so I could get that aligned just right. And I also now have a high die cut to use on another card. I have found from past experience that when you adhere frames like that striped pattern paper piece, it's best to put your adhesive onto the piece that you're going to glue it onto. In the past, I have wrinkled the frame trying to put adhesive on it, or I don't get it laid down nicely. So I put adhesive around all four sides of the front of the card and laid my frame in place. And now it's time for my big blue roll of foam tape to make its appearance. This roll in front of me is quarter inch wide and just recently I ended up buying some different widths and one of those will come into play here in just a little bit. But I just love this width for getting in some of those tight spaces on shaker cards. I took my time making a nice frame around the die cut opening and sometimes I did have to cut pieces in half to get in the tighter spaces. Once I had my foam tape around the opening, I then brought in my new larger roll. This is three quarters of an inch and I just finished putting some foam around the outside on the back of the card. This is the point in the card where you never know what to do when you're making a shaker. If you pull the tape now, you're going to have shaker bits stuck to your adhesive, but if you don't pull it now, when you go to pull the release paper later, your shaker bits fly all over the place. So keep this in mind when you're making those, just take your time and be very gentle. And now it's time to make that shaker mix. This little square bowl and the little silver plastic spoon are both from the Dollar Tree. I wasn't really sure how much of each color I would need, but this opening is pretty large, so I put a decent amount of each color into my little bowl and then I mixed it up. I just love seeing shaker mixes come together, don't you? Since the dot on the eye is its own little shaker window, I put just about half a spoonful of the shaker bits into that opening. Then I use the spoon and just spread the shaker bits around the H and the I. Now I did have some stick to the adhesive, so I gently use the back of my spoon and kind of pried those off there. Overall, it did pretty well. Once I had those all in place, I then brought in that scrap of lightweight white cardstock and put that on the back and then that just seals in all of my shaker bits. I love that these almost look like cupcake sprinkles in this opening. I pulled the remaining release paper on the back of this piece and then I got back out my ATG and I added adhesive on the back of the white cardstock backer. This then just got centered onto the card front and the card is almost done. Before I call this card complete, I want to do a little more embellishing. So I got out my art glitter glue and I've mentioned it recently, but this stopper on top was made by a fellow crafty YouTuber. If you're interested in finding more, I will link her video below. I also got out my Silhouette Quick Pick tool. Now this brand isn't available anymore, but I do have a similar one linked below. This helps me pick up those little diamond dots and place them onto the adhesive. Now I will tell you on the first two, it was a little bit trickier. I put too much glue, so it moved around too much for that Quick Pick tool to release it. So I tried again, and by that time I had wiped some of the glue off the card front, and that next one stuck down right away. I just continued to place dots of glue and diamond dots until I had a nice splattering of those on the front of the card. Every once in a while I did try to adjust each of the dots with the other end a little bit, trying to center it on the embossed dots on the card front. And here is a look at the finished card.
I hope you enjoyed getting to see how I made this quick and easy shaker card. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Now don't forget, if you want to check out that Facebook challenge group, it is linked in the description box below. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.